as I've worked through this story and kind of started the journey, I've wondered, you know, why not just go back home? Like everything's falling apart around you. You're being discriminated against and you don't have family support and you kind of don't have a leg to stand on. And I just really didn't understand like, why didn't she go back home? I'm so glad that she didn't because then I wouldn't be here. But it was like something that I wondered. I was thinking I was too happy. You said, leave it up to me. I'll take all of your happiness and throw it right into the sea. I'll leave you with a gaping hole. Leave you with memories. I'll bury your happy fathoms deep. And you'll sink just like... My father passed. We had no help. And my mother had to go out and work and support eight kids. My grandfather, my father's father, okay, he owned boarding houses and pubs, you know, so he had made money, you know, but no help. He did not like uh, his children, didn't marry Irish. First time I knew that I was part Indian, we were in his house. I think my mother was going there trying to get some money to bury my father. That didn't happen. He poked his head out around the corner and he said, make sure those little Indians stay in their place. And I looked at my oldest sister, Maggie, and I was like, what the heck? I was told by my mother that my grandfather, who was John Donnelly, that his family was 100% Irish and totally against him marrying Lola and that they rejected her because she was too ethnic. I didn't find that out till maybe two, three years ago, that there was ever kind of um, a rejection from the family because I had asked my mother, well, here, grandma's with eight children. Where's the rest of the family on the other side when he died to help you? And she said, oh, they had nothing to do with us. I think the family's going to come in and help somehow. And no, she had absolutely no help from anybody. My mother's ex experience growing up, there's two things going on. Number one is you're getting along, right? And what do you also have available to you? Not typical things that you would find um, in the South, you would find in Albany, New York. But then the, the effect of poverty. My mother would say they, they were hungry. They were starving. They would raid people's gardens to get food. She, she said she would never have cabbage soup again because that really is just a, a thing of water with a, the cabbage leaf in it. You know, she loved the tail of the chicken. I didn't even know you ate that. Um, it was, it's gross. It's just cartilage and fat and yeah, it's gross. My mother's phrase was, you know, with the cow, you ate everything but the moo and with the pig, you ate everything but the oink because they didn't have anything. So I would think that that would have a lot of effect on what Lola would, would be able to share with her family. Um, you know, desperate times, <laughs> desperate measures. You, you know, whatever is available is what you're eating. And so my mother's brothers and sisters, they all dropped out of school very young and went to work. Katie was one of the older sisters. My mother was one of the younger ones. And she told me that um, Aunt Katie works in Albany. And Aunt Katie would distract people. She would um, let Grammy, my mother, marry and steal stuff. They didn't, have, they didn't have food. And my mother never told me about that until, I'm going to say, a couple of years ago. I felt sad that it was that bad that they had no help, um, that they had to really rely on themselves. When my dad passed away, I, I, I think I was five years old or six, probably six years old. And we didn't have any toys because we're very poor people, so we didn't have any toys. and no toys. I remember these people would come up and, with a horse and, you know, dress you up with a cowboy hat on, take your picture, and then try to sell the picture to the adult in the family. And uh, the first time this woman come out and said to the guy that had the, the, the horse and stuff like that, he said, don't bother with them kids, they're poor. And I was like, what the hell is that? And I had to find out what poor was. <laughs> And we were poor. You know, once I found out about um, Lola being of uh, Indian descent, things started to make more sense to me. I'm not saying that she was ashamed of it. I think she was shunned for it. So she just uh, said, hey, I'm going to keep it to myself. You can 
Let people think what they want. Did you ever say anything about what it was like growing up in Louisiana? No, she never did. She never told us anything about Louisiana. So is that where she met your father? Yes, she met my, my father. My father was uh, was working as an engineer in, on airplanes. They sent him down to work on an airplane that was that that was down there, that, and so he went down there, stayed at a place that was close to my mother's house, and uh, and he met my mother there. So that they started dating, and he married her, and brought her back to Troy, New York, which she hated. My brother Jack was born in Louisiana. So not only did she leave, she left, went to New York. Her husband died. She's in a crappy spot and came back down to visit multiple times and still came back to New York after all of that. She had every opportunity to stay. I feel like you have more opportunity to go back home. Yeah, she was rejected by her husband's family. I would, I would think about the decision that she made to leave with John. Sometimes when we make a decision to leave, and you know, she had a, a relationship and a loving relationship with her family at, at home and things like that. But sometimes you've you've made a choice and you're like, I think I have to I have to follow it through. And if there's a path through, then here I'm, that that's the path I'm on. I'm following it. Why did she make that decision to not go back? Or why did she make the decision to come that that family was not accepting of Lola and the children because they weren't white Irish or something? I don't know. Um, and so they weren't supportive of them when, when the father, her husband, passed away. So you would think that if she didn't have any family around here and, and her you know, in-laws were not supportive of her, that she would go back to where her roots were, but she didn't. So there must have been something here that was appealing to her that seemed, this is a better place for me and my children to stay, even though I don't think that they were financially in a good place. She made it work and, and uh, the kids all grew up and they did great. So whatever she did, kudos to her because she pulled it off. And I would consider the legacy that Lola has to be very successful in all of us. And so I would love to see the kind of written determination, even if it was ugly and messy, I would love to see that story unfold. I don't know exactly what my grandmother would think about me starting this journey in earnest. Um, she was always a little bit reticent to talk about this stuff, but I don't know if it was from a place of... Um, hiding things herself or if it was from a place of just not really knowing. I'm curious about the stories in the rest of my family. Um, so I, you know, I know how, how I was raised and I know like what my mom was told. What about if there's family still in Louisiana? Um, I feel like all of these people could like kind of fill in the gaps of knowledge because I think a lot of the knowledge that we have is wrong. Under the Mississippi sun I wonder if my time has come The dust is flying overhead Live vultures circling round the dead Visions of water up the road Look like a creek that's overflowed If I ever get to me my hopes and dreams all disappear